Fighting in Mortal Kombat is a combination of martial arts, magic, and just completely over-the-top violence. There are heads being decapitated, spines being ripped out of bodies, swords, impalements, anything you can imagine. It's about combat. I mean, that's the name of the show. It's Mortal Kombat. So that's what people are looking for. The fans want to see the action. They want to see the fighting. When you're doing Mortal Kombat, you know, there are certain elements that you just simply cannot lose. You can't get rid of fatalities. And you can't get rid of violence. Violence is something that I know has always been an issue with Mortal Kombat, but it's also been the factor that has made it burst out into the pop zeitgeist. And if you completely remove it, it's not Mortal Kombat that it's And action. Every story has not just one fight sequence, but multiple. All the fights had to be based off of emotion. We just didn't want to have characters fighting for the sake of fighting or killing for the sake of killing. We needed them to fight for a reason. That energy kind of took it out of you. This way, you stagger backwards a little bit, and then you can see them that way. I didn't want to treat it like a martial arts film where it's essentially just a bunch of random dialogue to get you to the next fight. Release me! Release me now! I needed to feel somewhat invested in what the fight meant and what the stakes were. I had an idea of what I want, but then I got in contact with a fight choreographer named Larnell Stovall, who, you know, I was extremely lucky to get him. You spin, go for the thigh. The main thing that impressed me was he sat down with a bunch of clips of some martial arts films that not too many people in America would know about. And to say he put this reel together and showed me this is the style, this is the look that he wants, I was like, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. I had all these scenes picked out. I said, I like certain things about this. Now, can you take all those bits and pieces but make it our own? Because I come from a dance choreography background. We were able to kind of toss back just different ideas. That dancing background really, really helps in fight scenes because either way, it's still rhythm, it's still choreography, and he knows how to smooth out the transition between the two. But he was the architect of how to make that thing just powerful and move and the fluidity, and it just constantly progressed. Go! Pause! And go! Then from there, I made sure to shoot it in a non choppy way. I didn't want it to like just shoot a bunch of shaking cameras and cut it really quickly. That's it. I can do it with one camera. That became a challenge, but we did that in a rehearsal studio, and that's the way I always want to do it now. We work out the cameras in previs, and we get to see what it feels like, how it flows, the pacing. We shoot, you know, with the best cameras we have, but then when a real big, expensive camera's come to set, some things change. Shot. Bam, bam. Feel those behind. Look around. Boom. And wait, slow down into that guy's head. Boom. Boom. What I may do, in five hours it may take two days on set. But previous helps you save time and save money because you've set the example of what needs to take place on set before you get there. Everything's well prepped, rehearsed, planned. It's not just coverage anymore. It's really kind of paint by numbers. Of course, there's little things that happen on set that allow you to manipulate and do different interpretations. But for the most part, it's already completely constructed before you ever step foot onto a real set. Great, here we go, rehearsal! Four, so, so, so it's like three, four. The role that violence has in my episode is, you know, diplomacy and logic just you kind of fall short, so you got to whoop some ass. Boom! There may be a way of fighting that I would say is more efficient, that this guy's, you know, like his personality, he's straight to the point. He's seen as this SWAT-type, military-type guy, but when you cast a guy like Michael Jai, now you bring in a unique added element of a great martial artist. So I'm going here, boom, right hand. There, there was your shot. OK, just extend it out. Yep, your shot right in between your hands. I have to impart my character ethos to Larnell, and we work together. 
and find a fighting style that fits. Boom, body shot now. That's all I need, and then uppercut, spin away from me. It's hard to find the right people to fight him a lot of times. That's usually a challenge from working with him. Sometimes he has to pull back on his speed so he doesn't make this guy look too bad. But in the world of Mortal Kombat, it balances because guys either have powers, guys fight dirty. It kind of levels the playing field, which is cool for his character. So he doesn't look so dominant at all times because you do want your hero to have a challenge and find a way to overcome that challenge. Don't change anything except roll. roll the other way. That's it. Now we have such a shorthand on working with each other, because he can say, I, I want to start like this, this, and that, and then we'll figure out the middle, because he just knows how we work together. You know, it's kind of like you know, musicians getting together and jamming. Rip shot. Right. Covering up. Here we go. Four. One, two, three. Two. Great. Put blood on his face, please. Dragon is here. Here, first one. Your second one, possibly here. With any actor, if they never done any real fight scenes or this fight scene is really, really going to be challenging, I look at what they're able to pull off in the amount of time that I'm given. Take that gun. Keeping in mind that I was getting there the day before I was supposed to start shooting and had no time to fight train and wasn't a trained fighter. He was kind of like, okay, well, you know, we can just shoot everybody and you don't have to fight at all. And I said, no, because that defeats the purpose. I mean, if Sonya's not going to fight, then what's the point? That's not Sonya. That's what I Jerry did great, and she would have had a much bigger fight scene as well, but we didn't have the time. The little bit she had to do, she was very intense. She has good hip movement, she has good power and speed, and she can pick up real fast. So that's why what you saw her do, you believed it, because she kept practicing it over and over and over. She executed flawless. Finish, and not a big, love it. Sector Cyrax episode. That was probably the biggest episode that required motion capture. He'll break it. Boom. He goes to you now. Boom. There we go. So as long as we shoot this general area, we can. That's covered. For, it'll be covered for both sections. It's, it's all because we're doing it in mocap. As long as we know the general, like this is the area where they do this section and this section, we'll be able to. Gotcha. We only needed to shoot small pieces of the fight, you know, major pieces that had to be done there on the actual location. From there, there was a separate day where I took the same guys and we shot it in front, just green screen. Now, because of the motion capture ability to capture every move from a 360 standpoint, you don't have to reset, you don't have to take as much time as you do when you're on set. The guys were really able to get into it and also pull off each move safely and comfortably. That's why every trick that you saw was those guys not enhanced. Because when you hire the right people, then you get it done each time correctly the first time. Project Hydro Fatality. Excellent. Uh, Ryan, uh, turn your right shoulder here, and as soon as you action, boom, just as if it just embedded in you. That's it. Let's maybe take a step back and take it. And boom. When they tased him, it basically woke up some of his inner power that was dormant because of him constantly being sedated. Every now and then, just like maybe two or three, Sorry. you're shaking and then one like jolt. Okay. Like it's start, you're starting to get recharged. Okay. okay. But I took it that he is literally human right now. 
and even a small percentage of him receiving some of his godlike powers again would obviously make any human look weak. So when the guys rushed in the room, his hits were stronger. The guys went flying back. When he kicks that guy, he goes into a pillar. The pillar gets damaged, so you see the result of his power, and that's where the special effects department comes in and helps me out as well. My wire guys rehearse it with a stunt guy just to test the line, how smoothly he gets jerked back. Is it too vicious? Is it not vicious enough? You know, do you want more speed? Do you want less speed? All right, here we go. Ready, and three, two, one. Now, surprisingly, Ryan is very good. He actually takes martial arts. So when it was time for me to work with him, even though it was sharp, crisp movements of what he had to do, he picked them up real fast. Step in, step around, and boom. I saw the crispness in his techniques, you know, whether it was how to do a ridge hand, how to do the head, but I would definitely say if Raiden had to do a one-on-one -on -one fight scene, you wouldn't see any weaknesses. He would hold his own. The fight sequences, what people don't realize is that that's real snow. And even with putting, you know, cleats or, you know, grates on their shoes, it wasn't enough for our fighters to be doing all the flips that they're doing. It's one thing to practice it in the gym, and it's another thing to get in this outfit. Either the snow's sinking your weight down, or it's solid and making you slide. I had to shoot a lot of it, at least, all the flips with without seeing their feet, no wide shots. I had to cut their feet off because they had to perform on a uh, wooden board. That was really difficult, but they pulled it off and they wanted to keep going. They were very professional, and I don't know how they pulled it off. I mean, they must have been so sore the next day. Set, set. And... Kevin played Scorpion from a traditional standpoint. So when it was time for him to fight, we couldn't have him doing too many tricks because that seemingly wouldn't be in a samurai type of coat, even though he's a ninja as well. Sub-Zero, I felt like if he's going to be the badass, he needs to dictate this fight. When you see the fight happen, Scorpion has to find a way to overcome this guy who's just flipping and tricking and all these crazy things, but yet hitting you. And I'm a fan of tricking. I'm a fan of what these kids are doing this generation. But my job is to find a way to put it in there where it makes sense. Because you may see a lot of other fight scenes where a guy is flipping, 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 and the actor just stands here the whole time while he's flipping. There's no interaction. You know, if you're gonna make a guy flip, sweep at his legs. Make him have to twist in the air and get out the way because you could have took his legs out. But in the middle of it, he finds a way to kick you and counter what you're doing. So you have to find a way or play a chess game with his tricks to make him come back down to your world. I think the fighting in the web series was a great interpretation of the fighting in the video game. They identify things that are signature to the character, but then they kind of present it in a more real-world scenario, something that's a little bit more credible in the format that it's being presented. There is a level of violence that I tend not to go gratuitous violence. You should always feel tonally like it's there and that it's implied but you don't necessarily have to see it like a really bad horror movie. Each episode, I was nervous every time it came on because I never saw the final product until I saw it. You know, so I'm sitting there thinking about what we shot, what I choreographed, what I rehearsed, compared to what I'm seeing. It blew me away.
Come on! 